Hello students, welcome to the video class. Today let us learn and understand about the chapter heat. We all know that heat is a form of energy which makes the substance hot. In winter, it is our common experience that we feel cold inside the house. And if we come out in the sun, we feel warm. Now if we know that, how do we feel this sensation of warm or cold? Then what will be our answer? Think. In this chapter, we will try to find out the answer to such kind of questions. We all experience hot and cold, hotness and coldness. In our daily routine, we come across number of objects, out of which some are hot while other objects are cold. For example, when a frying pan is kept on a burning gas stove, it becomes hot. But if you touch the handle of the pan, it will be cold. Even among the hot objects, some objects may be hotter than the other. In the same manner, among the cold objects, some objects may be colder than the other. So, if I ask you, how you decide the relative hotness or coldness of object, then your answer will be by simply touching the objects. But, our sense of touch is not enough in telling us whether the object is really hot or not. Let us understand this by performing a simple activity. Here in this image you can see a person is dipping his right hand finger, finger of right hand in cold water and finger from left hand in hot water. You can also try this activity. For this you need to take three tubs. One tub should be filled with cold water, another tub should be filled with hot water and the third tub should be filled with the lukewarm or normal water. Two to three minutes you should keep your pointing finger in cold water and hot water. Finger of right hand in cold water, finger of left hand in hot water. After two or three minutes, simultaneously if you dip both the fingers in normal water, you will have different experience here. Try to do this activity, perform this simple activity at home and discuss your experience with me. We can understand if an object is hot or cold by the sense of touch. However, it can trick us sometimes. Therefore, we need, we need to use a device called thermometer. Thermometer measures temperature. We all know that Temperature is a degree of hotness or coldness of an object. Here is the image of a thermometer. We all know that it is a device used to find out how hot an object is. In other words, we use thermometer to measure the temperature of an object. There are different types of thermometer. The image displayed here is the image of clinical thermometer. You might have used this several times at home or you might have seen the doctors using this. Clinical thermometer is used for measuring temperature of human body. In case of fever, it is used by doctors or even at home, we use this to measure the temperature of the patient. This thermometer, look at this given image here. This thermometer consists of a long glass tube having thin and uniform bore. There is a glass bulb at one end of the glass tube which consists of mercury. There is a very short range of temperature of this thermometer. Look here and try to identify the ranges between 35 to 42 degrees Celsius. Why is this short range? Have you ever thought of this? This short range in the clinical thermometer is because of the fact that temperature of human body normally does not go below 35 degrees Celsius or it doesn't go above 42 degrees Celsius. 
can you tell me what is the normal body temperature? It is, yes, you can look here, it is marked in red. Our normal body temperature or human's normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius in the Celsius scale. Now, let us learn how to use the clinical thermometer. Firstly, we need to wash the thermometer with an antiseptic solution like Dettol. Before taking the temperature, the thermometer should be given few jerks to bring down the level of mercury below 35 degrees Celsius. Then, the thermometer should be placed beneath the tongue for about a minute. Then you can take it out and observe the temperature reading on the thermometer. We need to take some precautions while using this clinical thermometer. Let us learn what are those precautions. Wash the thermometer before and after using it. Make sure the temperature of the thermometer is below 35 degrees Celsius before taking the temperature. Keep the thermometer straight in order to see the mercury level precisely, correctly. It should always be held with care or it can break down. You should not touch the bulb of thermometer at all. These are the precautions or precautionary measures that should be taken while using the clinical thermometer. Next, the other type of thermometer is the laboratory thermometer which we use in the laboratory. Look at this given image. This is the image of laboratory thermometer. Laboratory thermometer is used to find out the temperature of the objects such as water. It is not used to find out body temperature, human body temperature. This thermometer can measure the temperature from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. Here is one more image of laboratory thermometer. Here it is red in color because it is filled with alcohol. Here one point to be noted children. Mercury, alcohol. Both are filled here in the thermometer. Both can be uh, used uh, to find the readings. It runs in the capillaries and with the help of alcohol also we can find the reading. We need to take some precautions by using the laboratory thermometer also. Using laboratory thermometer, by using laboratory thermometer, you should always follow the same precautions as that of the clinical thermometer. You should always hold the laboratory thermometer in a straight upright position without tilting it. You should not tilt it. You should not keep it cross. You should keep it always in an upright position as you can see in this image. The bulb of the thermometer should never touch the surface of the container in which the substance is kept. However, the bulb of the thermometer should be completely immersed in the substance so that it covers the bulb from all the sides. Next, the other type of thermometer is maximum minimum thermometer. Maximum minimum thermometer is a thermometer that is used to measure the minimum and maximum temperature of the day by weather forecaster. Whenever you are seeing the weather news, you may be observing that you, they will give you the information of minimum temperature and maximum temperature of the particular area. How, they, how do they do this? They do it by using this type of thermometer that is minimum and maximum thermometer. The thermometer display, displayed here on the screen is used to measure both minimum temperature and maximum temperature of particular area. Next, there are other newly designed thermometer. Here are the digital thermometer. It is sometimes difficult to handle a mercury filled thermometer, especially when it breaks and mercury falls out. So many times accidentally 
the thermometer falls down and the mercury may ooze out and the glass may break this will be very hectic so to come out of these disadvantages nowadays digital thermometers are available to use this type of thermometer does not contain mercury it directly displays the correct temperature on the display screen as you can see here with the use of sensors it directly uh, displays it records the temperature and it displays on the display screen here you can look at this image these are the digital thermometers next transfer of heat the next concept that we are going to learn now is transfer of heat transfer of heat the flow of heat always takes place from hot object to cold object now let us learn one by one transfer of heat takes place in three ways the first one is convection this image also gives us the understanding of what is meant by convection the other way is conduction the third is radiation so the three different ways of transfer of heat is by convection conduction and radiation here is one more image that helps us to understand this three important ways of transfer of heat one is convection conduction and radiation which is naturally occurring in our environment now let us learn what is meant by conduction conduction is a process of flow of heat from hot object to cold object some objects can conduct heat while others cannot the objects that conduct heat are called as good conductors and the objects that do not conduct heat are called as insulators these are the example for insulator here are the conductors example for conductors are copper aluminum gold example for insulators are wood styrofoam plastic etc the other way of transfer of heat is convection the transfer of heat in liquids and gases is called convection where the molecules of the liquid or gas that are near to the source of the heat gets heated first they become lighter due to heat and move upwards the colder particles being heavier take the place and this process continues until the whole liquid or gas gets heated that is why the area above the flame of a candle always feels hot but the area on the sides of the candle does not many a time when you are preparing tea at home you can easily observe how the molecules get heated up it comes up the molecules which are heavier goes down so like this convection if you carefully observe when you are preparing tea or boiling something you can observe this transfer of heat through convection very easily the next type of transfer of heat is by radiation radiation is a process of transfer of heat which is in the form of waves for example the sun's heat reaches the earth's surface through radiation every hot object radiates some heat into the environment hence many times an object get heated just by being near to a hot object as you can see here there is a bonfire and if you keep the hand near this far you can feel the uh, heating effect warm effect because the radiations are coming out through this fire and it is moving in all directions dear students now let us learn the new concept 
sea breeze and land breeze. Very interesting concept from this chapter. How? What are sea breeze and what are land breeze? First, let us understand what is sea breeze. The wind blowing from the sea towards the land is called sea breeze. If you have gone to the coastal area, you might have experienced the sea breeze. The nice cool breeze that flows from the top of the sea and it reaches the land area, coastal land area. This breeze is commonly referred as sea breeze. What causes this cool sea breeze? Let us understand now. As you can see in this picture, try to see this arrow marks and try to understand here there is a sea on the right side and here there is a land, coastal area. During daytime, the land in the coastal area gets heated due to the sun's radiation. The sea also gets heated. However, it takes more time to get heated up than the land. The land gets heated up faster and the sea water takes long time to get heated up. Therefore, what happens is the air that is present above the land gets heated faster. Then the air above the sea, that the air which is present above the land gets heated faster than the air which is present above the sea. The hot air from the land rises above and it is lighter because hot air is always lighter. Because the air above the land heats gets heated, it becomes lighter and it goes up. It raises above. As it raises above, the cool air from the sea being heavier takes its place. And because of this, we get the sea breeze. Now let us understand the another one that is land breeze. What is land breeze? The wind blowing from the land towards the sea is called the land breeze. If you are resting in the ship in the sea, then what uh, feeling or the what uh, breeze you are experiencing is because of the land breeze. You are experiencing the land breeze. So to experience this land breeze, you need to rest yourself in the ship in the sea. Yes. The wind blowing from the land towards the sea is called the land breeze. During the night time, the land in the coastal areas gets cooled down faster than the sea. The air above the sea is hotter than the air above the land. Therefore, the air above the sea raises and the land and the air from the land being cool flows towards the sea. This results in the land breeze. So dear students, now we have learnt about sea breeze and land breeze. Go through the lesson and if you get any doubt, please contact me. Thank you. Have a nice day.